Using salvaged wood to make a turkey blind. William Hovey Smith, 2019. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and we talk about turkey hunting in Backyard Deer as well as some of our other outdoor books. I'm also the author of a business book, Create Your Own Job Security, that advocates that you should start your businesses anytime they're needed, whether you are otherwise employed or not. This is the second of perhaps five videos in this series. The first was using salvage steel tubing, which is already posted, using salvage wood, uh, this video of course. The next will be setting up the blind, which I'm going to do this morning as a matter of fact. The fourth is a story, rainy day turkey hunting. And the last, hopefully, will be turkey success for my homemade blind. This is Hobie Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And so what I'm going to be about doing is making a portable blind. Now I recovered from my favorite supply house, the Dempsey Dumpster, these thin steel poles. And they are segmented, although, as you see very well, white color. So, we're going to paint these and we're going to put these in the ground and use them as a frame to drape our chemo cloth here. Now this is burlap and I've used it on oh, my duck boat for years. So it's about time it got replaced anyway. So yeah, uh, we're going to go ahead and sacrifice this and build up a couple of blinds. I need to make a piece of wood to go about this far down in each of these tubes to hold up the cloth material in the blind whilst I also leave room for attaching this as a shooting rail. So consequently, I'm going to need a piece of wood that inserts in here uh, about three inches long. Whilst we're letting that glue set, I'm going to start thinking about attaching our shooting rail here. Now it'll have three supports, one about here, one about here, and one about here. So I'm going to go ahead and drill those and see if I can extract that uh, one nail down there at the end or cut it off either way. This piece of wood was once part of a crate that one of my trophies was shipped in. Large trophy, hence a large box. And uh, these divots here are screw and nail holes that I pulled. So I'm going to fill these with wood putty, and since this is going to be the gun rest, I'm going to round this edge here. And that will also tend to make it a little more water resistant. And we're going to put a couple of good coats of paint on here too, uh, to keep it up as long as possible, and well as, oh, <laughs> keeping things like the carton of bees out of it. This container of wood putty is at least 15 years old and it had dried to the point of being unusable. So what I've done is I mixed it with a little organic solvent, namely acetone. I was thinking that maybe that would revive it and indeed it is. You can see it's working up now and getting more like a consistency such as a putty so I can use it. This acetone evaporates pretty rapidly. The more I can break the lumps out of, the easier and smoother it'll spread. We have our vise in position and clamped, and we're going to drill our three support holes for the shooting rail now. As it turned out, it works best if I drilled a pilot hole first and then went with this bit.
it's a good deep hole. Our test of this was would any three of our support stakes at random fit in those holes, stand vertical, and be the same height? And indeed they are. If you're wondering what in the world happened to the bandsaw, this bandsaw, like most others I suspect of some of the design, has a tiltable bed. I've never used this feature, I've never had occasion to. But what I want to do is to make this top surface that's going to be exposed to the weather uh, more nearly rounded. And my first impulse was to laboriously gnaw all this excess material off uh, with a grinder wheel. Well, that would have taken a long time and generated a tremendous amount of dust and so on and so on and so on. So this is a much more efficient way to handle that problem. So uh, we're going to start everything else and make this cut and take a triangular piece off of the top here. I'm going to hook up the vacuum as well to take capture some of the dust as it's cut. So there's going to be a lot of noise going on. We're now very nearly ready to start painting. Now the piece I've been sanding on and rounded the top of, you can see obviously on the bottom, and the top is an, its companion piece that was cut at exactly the same time. Both of these have been out on my porch and it has been rainy and wet and this wood has a very high moisture content right now. So what I'm going to do is take it and take it inside and put it in my oven and bake it at about uh, 225 degrees for a while. My drying has opened up some cracks in the wood. You can see them running here, here, all the way down. So I need to put in some pins, nails actually, uh, here, 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 and here. So we're going to do that before we paint. The size nails that goes through these holes is critical. I, I pre-drilled some holes. And we'll see how we do here. Okay, that actually went, actually went through. Okay. We now have the reinforcing pins in our gun rest here. And it's dry enough, I think we can go ahead and paint now. Okay. We're now getting ready to attach the blind cloth to actually the gun rest here. And because this burlap is so fragile, what I'm going to do is use this strip from an old threshold and attach it with four wood screws here and use that to constrain the cloth and put friction on it all the way down the line. So we're going to paint this up 
and drill it and also drill some pilot holes in the wood here strategic places and get that done and then outside of putting it up we'll actually be finished and have it all done in a day's time a rainy day for turkey hunting and that's rain you hear out there right now hard rain we have the burlap uh, on our shooting rail here and we're going to use this plate to hold it and I'm going to secure it with these long screws here so we're going to start them in these pre-drilled holes uh, everything else is going to be put together in the field this is now very firmly attached. It's not going anywhere. And this will be how it's draped over the front of the blind like this. So this will go straight down like that. And then the wing walls will come off to the sides. And here we have basically essence of turkey blind. This is a drape and it's over the top of the shooting rail. This strip retains the drape on the shooting rail in the front of the blind. These are your support stakes. We're going to attach these zip ties to a cord which will string out to the sides. This is a driving hammer for actually driving the stakes in the ground. And then this is what you hit the top of the hammer with. So you employ it like that because this is rather thin tubing and you need to support it as you drive it and so there we are and it'll dry out overnight and finish and then hopefully we'll take it and put it out in the woods tomorrow one final thing that I want to do to help waterproof this fabric and particularly the fabric that's held right in here is to coat it with hot wax. Okay, I've got my hot wax now. I'm using these heavily insulated outdoor gloves. Good. Now this entire top layer of fabric is saturated and we just let it sit there and set. This is a blind rolled up with the tools I need to put it in the ground that I'll be taking in the woods. Now that package, including the driving hammer as well as the soft hammer, uh, weighs about six pounds. Without the tools, about four pounds. Besides backyard deer hunting, I have other books that talk about turkey hunting. This includes my prize winning extreme muzzle loading, and tell you how to do it with crossbows and crossbow hunting, and also an ebook series that discusses hunting with muzzle loading guns. My new business book, Create Your Own Job Security, is for individual entrepreneurs. What it advocates is that people start businesses as early as high school, then in college take some business courses along the way, go ahead and develop a business whilst you work for someone else. Then, should you be in your 40s and later and get suddenly terminated from your job, you actually have a business to fall back on. Like others of my Billy Joe Rubido construction projects, I'm using salvage materials. Now, the general motto for much of what I do is take what you have and make what you need. For more information on my books, blogs, and nearly 750 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. For more information on my business books, you can go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.